Okay. Well, you're recording from your end, so that's good. Because uh, it's a good time to, to say, are we recording after you've been on here for 10, 15 minutes? So, uh, now, what I'd like to do is invite I invite Howard, uh, have you come in at this point and give us your, uh, your, in, your intake on all of this and uh, your help. Howard's been, uh, and I have worked together for the last, gosh, I don't know, 10 years, maybe longer, but, um, and the guy is a financial guru, practiced 14 years, I believe, and then uh, was able to retire, and he runs a, um, a cash flow uh, optimization business. I, that's that's how I'm calling it, Howard. I'm going to let you. Uh, I'm going to let you uh, talk now. Yeah, no, I, I I appreciate it, Bruce. I mean, you're from the business side. You're you're given a lot of great info. The only couple pieces that I'll add in terms of things that I have seen, which maybe the people on the call can utilize, is uh, number one. There's a bank in Texas called Amigy. A-M-E-G-Y. It's part of a larger company called Zions, which people in the western half of the U.S. have probably heard of. Uh, right now, they're doing business loans up to $50,000. You have to be, have been in business for two years, made a profit, decent credit. So I'm guessing that if they're doing that in Texas, they're doing that in other states. I know 50,000 may not go tremendously far, but right now every dollar can help. Um, the person here in Texas to contact, her name is Barbara, 210-343-4468. I don't have representatives of every state, but this is just something I wanna pass on. The other thing which I did not hear is there actually is an sba.gov website to try and apply for these loans. Uh, it's called disasterloan.sba.gov. Uh, and inside there, there is a micro loan program. I will be completely honest. You get to a government website, my head starts to hurt. So I don't know all the particulars, but I would certainly take the time to look and see how can I get help Inside that microloan program, there are organizations in every state that can help you fill out these apps. Um, so that's it on the business side. Can I ask? So, can I ask a question, Howard? Sure. Is it something I don't understand? I know that we have. We've just been uh, in Texas, and I think there's nine states, eight or nine states that have been a disaster area. So now these disaster relief loans are available. I, and but is that the same thing that? That's different than what they're talking about with this $2 trillion. Is that, is that your understanding that there's two different things here or is it all? No, the way that I am understanding this is they basically called the entire country a disaster zone. Okay. So anyone in any state can be eligible for this. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. I knew that the big disaster relief bill, cause we were doing that from our, you know, for the, the company, but it, it was like, wow, uh, first of all, you know, we're from the government and we're here to help. That's always a scary thing. So go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, no, that that's okay. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to, I, when you were saying 10 years, it might've been close to that. I know I was one of the first compassionate finance people to, to utilize a program once you finally launched it. So whenever you officially started that, you can say a few months before, and that's when we met. Um, but yeah, cash flow optimization, I guess, is the best way to put what I do now. Um, but because people run a business and they never think of their personal life, their family life as a business. And I realized the gap in the market, I realized in terms of helping the first few people, I was like, wow, there's something here. So I just want to give three quick things that you can do on the personal side to feel like you have relief, okay? And I'm gonna kind of do this family feud style. So I'm gonna start with number three. Number three is if you have a stock portfolio, it's not an IRA, it's not a 401k, it's not a Roth, it's not a retirement account, just a regular stock portfolio, stocks, bond, mutual funds, you have to pay capital gains, things like that. There, you can actually do a line of credit 
against your stock portfolio. Some companies call it a pledged asset line. Others call it a securities backed line of credit. And before I jump further, let me explain what a line of credit is. A line of credit is a tool or a vehicle that's open-ended. Money can flow in and out of it. The easiest example to think of is a credit card. You apply for a credit card, you get approved. You have a credit limit of, let's just say, $10,000. So you have the capability of charging up to $10,000 and then pay it off. So if you use $3,000 of it, you still have $7,000 available. If you pay 1,000 of that 3,000 off, you now have 8,000 available, okay? So the way that I help people is using various lines of credit. So everything I'm gonna talk about today is a line of credit and different ways that you can get them, okay? So I'm going to go back to number three here, the securities-backed line of credit. So if you have a stock portfolio, and yes, it has gone up and down like crazy, but let's just use an easy number of $200,000. You can use that asset as collateral to get cash or the capability and the accessibility to get cash. If you don't need it right now, you don't, you don't have to use it, similar to a credit card. If you don't charge anything, there's the potential of no interest on it, okay? So I'm gonna kind of go through three of the big companies that have these, E-Trade. A lot of people use E-Trade. They will do any value of your stock portfolio right now at 5.5%, interest only, okay? TD Ameritrade, you have to have a larger portfolio closer to 150,000 if you're a do-it-yourselfer, okay? If you do that, 3% for a line of credit. That same company that will do the 3% line of credit at TD Ameritrade, if you have an advisor at Fidelity or at Schwab, you can get that same 3%, okay? I personally use a company called Interactive Brokers, not the most intuitive in terms of trading, but their line of credit rates are astronomically low. If you have a portfolio over $100,000, 1.6%. Wow. Okay, which almost feels like free money. Now here's the catch with it. You can do typically up to 50% loan to value. So what that means is if your stock portfolio is $200,000, you can actually take cash against that of up to $100,000. But, and there's always a but, because the portfolio moves up and down, if it goes up, your loan to value against that goes down. But if it goes down, now you're crossing a red line, you have to pump cash back into it. So using that easy number of 200,000, I would not go over 25% of that potential credit line. So I would, I would not utilize more than $50,000 because if the stock goes down 30%, you're still under that overall 50% threshold. If it goes down 50% to 100,000, now you're right at that 50% threshold. So again, it's utilizing assets that you don't realize you can you have leverage against, okay? Any questions with that, Bruce? Because I know if you have a question, other people that are listening are gonna you know, have a question. I just, I, I knew, you know, you know, trading on margin and doing those types of things, but I just didn't know you could open up a line of credit doing that, so that's, uh, that's great info. Yeah, and they don't pull your credit score on that because you're literally using a, a, an asset that has value. Yep. So if your credit okay. score is, 800 or 500, it doesn't matter, okay? Um, going up the family feud thing, number two, credit cards, okay? Now, most people may kind of balk in terms of, do I really need another credit card? I would say in times like this, it can't hurt, all right? Now, I personally have four credit cards. Two of them I use actively. 
The other two are my backups. I never expected a situation like this, but they're there. And it's capable in terms of real times of crisis that I can use it, just pay the minimum interest and keep on going. If you plan on opening up another credit card, one or two, I would, here's a couple hacks. Number one, do it on the same day. So if you apply to, let's just say US Bank and Wells Fargo, just make the calls back to back to each other because they're gonna see the exact same credit score for you right now. They're not gonna know that one, that you opened up two at the exact same time, okay? The second thing that you have to do is make sure that those lines stay active and open and that obviously you pay it on time. So I mentioned those two backup credit cards. One of them, I have an automatic transaction of $30 a month. I have the capability of charging up to $25,000, okay? I just realized a few months ago, I wasn't utilizing it. Chase could just go in at any time and say, oh, I guess Howard's just kind of forgotten about this thing. We're closing the card. And then this happens. And now all of a sudden I'd be like, holy cow, I don't have, have $25,000 more flexibility than I did five months ago. So I just make a small $30 a month payment on that one and a roughly $50 payment on my other card, which has $20,000. So if you're gonna do this, put on a Netflix automatic account or do Hulu, or if you have a text tag in us being in Texas, if you got your toll roads, link it to that so that there is a charge that comes up every once in a while that the company is not gonna come in and close it down on you, okay? Here's the other flip with regards to credit cards. Let's just say, Bruce, that you had a credit score of 600. Okay, my credit score is around 820. You're like, I know I need to raise my credit score because if I do, I can get better mortgage rates. I can get better insurance prices. They just look at me as a better candidate. Yep. You can actually piggyback on my credit card. And so what I mean by that is if you gave me your date of birth, and your social security number, I can add you as an authorized user to my credit card. And all of a sudden, it looks like you've got this awesome credit facility that you didn't have before. And in roughly 60 to 90 days, your 600 credit score might go up to about 650 or 660, which May not sound like a lot, but if you're on the border, all of a sudden those things are going to help. So if you're in that position in terms of having a low credit score, let's just say that you're a new dental grad, you really haven't you know, made your mark in the financial world yet, ask your parents for help. Say, can you just put me on as an authorized user? I never get access to your credit card. That's the key thing. So I'm still on my own, but I'm able to utilize your good credit to help boost my credit score and help me That's in the cool. law. Okay? That's cool. The number one thing to do, and do not do the credit card thing if you're going to do the number one thing to do. Bruce mentioned it, home equity line of credit. What exactly is a HELOC? A HELOC is, again, think of a credit card Okay, it's open-ended, it's secured. The security is the equity in your house. So let's use the example of you have a $500,000 home. You have a current mortgage of $300,000. You have equity of 200,000. You can go to the bank and say, I'd like to get a home equity line of credit in what's known as second position, your mortgage is the first position, your line of credit comes in behind that. And you should be able to get a home equity line of credit of $100,000, up to 80% of the value of your home, really without any issue, okay? Or with very, very little issue. Now, a bank down here, which I am very, very good friends with the banker, it's Regions Bank, they kind of blanket the Southeast, 
if you open up a HELOC with them, the first six months, they do an intro rate of 0.99%. Wow. So just imagine that you get this HELOC in place, you've got $100,000, you take, and so here's the other little hack, you don't want it to just kind of sit there, especially in times like this, take $70,000 of it out, put it in a different bank, a different bank account, yeah, you'll be paying interest of, call it 70 to $80 a month, but to know that for the next six months, you've got $70,000 in cash just sitting there, that's going to ease a lot of fear in your mind. You bet. You bet. That even if you can't find an intro rate like that, because HELOCs are based on what's known as the prime rate, that's when the Fed says we're raising rates, we're lowering rates. It has nothing to do with mortgage rates. It has everything to do with the rate that banks will lend to their best customers, which are usually businesses. Think of enterprise businesses. HELOCs fall under that prime rate. So the prime rate fell 1.5% in 15 days because they cut it in an emergency in a 0.5%, and then 10 days later, cut it another one whole percentage point. So the prime rate right now is three and a quarter percent. So even if you just get a HELOC in second position, call it, you'll be paying three and a half percent on this money. Really, really cheap money. You only have to pay the interest. That's the other thing, a fixed payment loan. So you only have to pay the interest while you have the money out. So it's an excellent hedge in terms of, Again, you personally being a business because you are a business. Yeah. Yeah. You have your dental practice, but you are a business as well. Your goal, your business is to get to whatever point you want in your life to be able to have the freedom to do whatever the hell you want with the money that you've got. That's your business. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I mean, that's it. If you can't get a HELOC, the second thing to do, or the alternative to do, is a home equity loan, okay? Now, that is a fixed payment, but again, it's getting the access to cash right now. Sometimes it's worth spending 100, 150 bucks a month to know you just have cash in the bank, and this is one of those times. No doubt about it. That cash is king for sure, and that's, uh, thanks, Howard. I, I appreciate it. That. That's stuff that, you know, I knew about, but I haven't heard anybody talking about. So I'm, uh, you want to, you want to say something, Stephen, uh, about using the question and answer box, if anybody has questions? Yeah, I got a good one in the chat here for you, Howard. Um, can I HELOC my building if I own the land and the building worth over 800 without the practice included property only? Uh, the answer is yes, that does fall under the business side of things. So you would get, think of it kind of a business line of credit, but it's attached to real estate property and falls under different guidelines and what I'm talking about here. But the, the short answer is yes, you can do that. And part of the, just in terms of what I've spun off into and away from dentistry, Part of it is looking at this big picture, how to optimize your expenses, and how to use that cash flow to pay these debts down really, really fast. You know, once everything picks up, we could sit down together and kind of figure out in terms of how to do that. So, absolutely. We'll make, we'll make Howard's contact information available too. His everybody. contact information, all these links he named, I'm chasing around over the internet. That was great. That was great stuff. So I'll be sure to load up everything in that follow-up email today. Yeah, let me, let me just give you one last thing because I talked in terms of the back to that line of the securities back line of credit with like TD Ameritrade and Fidelity and stuff. The gentleman's name that you want to talk to, his name is Jeff Stewart, and his phone number is 214 214- Five four two zero seven seven nine. Okay, and so you can contact him. If you mention you're a dentist, he knows it came from us. So he's like, he's like, I'm ready and waiting. But yeah, he's been very, very busy these last few weeks. 
Oh, I bet. <laughs> I bet. Well, that's awesome. Thanks, Howard. Absolutely. Stay All right. Tomorrow. And Howard, if you could stick around with us till the end, that would be great. There'll probably be a few more financial questions coming up and we'll hit those at the top of the hour. Yeah, I'll just mute myself for now. So perfect. Right. Sounds good, guys. Thank All right. Now, um, you know, what I want to talk about is a Bella. And, and I mentioned it a little while ago. Uh, it's available at no charge until July 1st. This is something that uh, we developed. It's an AR management tool. Uh, let me get my, uh, you know, and, and the question would be, when was the last time you, uh, well, I, I'm going the wrong way now. Okay. When was the last time you upgraded your patient AR billing process? Never. Uh, paper statements, you know, paper statements, the millennials, and I'm, I've gotten that way too. I just file 13 everything, you know, if, if they'll call me or whatever. Uh, I just don't do that. Now, if I get something on my phone, I mean, everybody lives on their phone. So uh, phone calls can be uh, intrusive and ineffective. And 88% of the patients surveyed want an easier and a faster way to pay bills, period. Um, a Bella, we developed a Bella two years ago. We did our beta testing. Um, we're now working with dentists all over, you know, all over the U.S. and I believe in all 50 states. Uh, we're not in Canada yet, but I'm hopeful that we'll that this uh, will will be available in Canada soon, and uh, I will be able to let you know that over the next few weeks. But you're going to collect money faster uh, without sending statements and making phone calls, and it's it's automated. Uh, managing patient AR is a breeze with Abella's integration, multi-location management. We're working with a lot of DSOs, submit patients to Abella by the click of a button, meaning, uh, and you can choose to skip or exclude patients from invoicing. Uh, if your, you know, sister has come in and had some work done and you don't want to send her a statement or whatever, just, you know, you can mark off who you want to send a statement to and who you don't by skipping it or never invoice. And you can just handle that that way. Uh, preview your AR batch before submitting and then automate, automate your invoicing. So there's no licking stamps. There's no mailing stuff. It's a waste of money. I'm just telling you. Patients receive a link to view and pay their invoice via this, uh, this, um, this method. Uh, for instance, hi, Amanda, you have a balance due with our office for questions. Call our office. Here's the number. It is put in... Uh, with your logo on it, it comes from your practice uh, to view the invoice, pay off your balance or choose from a different uh, menu of payment options, click the button below. So they click it. Hi, Amanda, you have a balance due with our office. You know, you can, we have different, different ways of, of sending that. You have, um, again, text messages and email follow up. They're frequent, friendly and consistent. The messages are delivered every five days until the patient pays up to 90 days. Abella makes it effortless for patients to pay. Uh, and this is what I love. I mean, you click to view your invoice and then you can select right there, pay in full or a monthly payment. And uh, we had one uh, patient from 2015 and this was in mid 18. Uh, so they, they were over 90, they were over three years. <laughs> I mean, they, that's how, and we sent them, sent this out. We collected $77,000 of over 90 in our practice. Most of it was just sitting there because we never turned it over to a trans world or to any of those guys because you never really get any money from them anyway. So all of a sudden we just stuck it in there and it was like getting a $77,000 loan, except it was cash, you know, and it was, and we didn't have to pay it back. It was money that was owed us. Um, payment date, uh, they can select the payment date, the day they want to make the payment, payment info, and they can enroll in auto pay. Awesome, awesome tool. And it's automated. So the payments made via Bella are auto posted back to your dental medical software. We work with all the softwares, whether it's Dentrix, EagleSoft, Open Dental, and it's bi-directional integration. We go in, pull the data, you get to approve it, you hit a button, it goes out, uh, and then you can expect the phone to start ringing or you can expect payments to start to come in. And right now, when you have people that are you know, kind of isolated, what a, what a great way to get uh, to allow people to, to pay. Uh, payments you collect in your practice are synced back to Abella. 
Uh, Abella notifies patients of failed payments and pre-collections. When we started doing this, it, it was amazing. Uh, failure to pay or set up a payment plan in the following 15 days could result in your account being transferred to a collection agency for questions, call our office. Robust analytics, providing a 360 degree view of your AR. And, and people asked yesterday, we did uh, our program yesterday, said, well, don't you feel bad trying to go after money from these folks? There's a lot of folks that are still making money. They, you know, they're, you know, the school teachers here are still getting paid. The guy, a lot of the large places. So no, I, you know, they'll call you and tell you what a nice way to help people. If, you know, if you say, well, why don't you wait? If they, if they were to call you, then that's up to you. At least you get them calling you and you're not trying to call them. Uh, you get payment posting collection numbers and percentages, deposits, average days to collect, which is extremely important. Uh, this is Corson Dental. Uh, Callie Ward uh, was working with Cor Corson uh, for a year, and she's actually one of our coaches also. We had, with Productive Dentist Academy, we had 300 accounts in 90 plus days in AR. So the decision to go forward with Abella was a no-brainer. The same collection results would have taken a team member months, mostly driven by unanswered and unwanted calls to the patient. The return on investment for our group was very high and our patients now have an easy way to pay. With Abella, we collected from people with accounts two to three years old that ignored traditional methods, phone calls and mailings. They picked up an extra 70 grand of stuff that was, they were never gonna see. So this is, this again is like free revenue. Uh, it represents a performance of a group, 150 locations, uh, uh, four and a half million uh, in, in, that was collected. 23,000 patients paid in full, 2.1 million in 90 plus AR. But this is the big one to me. Over 90 AR, 53% collected. That is like unbelievable. This is uh, MB2 Dental. They're a DSO that we work with. Abella is amazing. It saves our office time and most patients pay before a statement could be delivered to their mailbox. Our collections have been at an all-time high since implementing Abella. That's Luis Guzman from... Uh, from MB2, he's the director of practice integration. They saw a 30% increase in AR collected, a 60% decrease in the cost to collect it, and 72% decrease in days sales outstanding. If you can contract that, that means when you're doing your work, you're getting paid faster. And so that that's a it's a no-brainer. Uh, pricing for this, basically, we have been charging for the last two years a thousand dollar setup which is software configuration, integrating, training, uh, AR data assessment, user guides, custom branded web pages and invoices. We do all of that now. We will do that for you and there's no cost. We, we're waiving that. We're actually waiving the software licensing fee, uh, which that's all you pay for collections when you, you know, like if you were to send it to one of the collection companies, they're gonna take 25% of every dollar collected. I didn't wanna do that. I would rather as a dentist, have a monthly fee that I pay that helps my team collect this. The average office, most offices have one person that handles their insurance and their accounts receivable. So if they step back and look at it, 83% of the time, they're on hold with insurance companies or dealing with insurance issues. 17% of the time, they're actually collecting. And the problem that you see is they always go to the top of the list. They always try to collect the biggest balance first and they work their way down and then somebody interrupts them or an insurance company calls and now they're back to the top of the list. So nobody's collecting the $82, the 51, the 19. Nobody's collecting those. And, oh, we'll get it when they come in next time. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen. With this, this is not to replace that person in your office. This is a $299 fee to help them collect money. And it's a literally no brainer. And we've waived everything because during this coronavirus situation, uh, we understand that people are stressed uh, and divert, we're gonna defer the license till seven one. There's no obligation. So if you say, hey guys, I don't wanna use it anymore. Great, thanks for helping. No worries. Uh, you'll send an email with a request to enroll to info at abellaar.com. Have your Put your practice name, practice phone, mean practice contact for setup and training. Complete an electronic order form that's emailed to you. Integrate. Uh, integration takes 15 to 30 minutes, uh, depending upon what software you have. And uh, download your training and user guides. Actually, there's very little training that needs to be done with Abella. Um, 
it's it's integrated and it's uh, automatic. So I want you to I want you to really seriously consider this is something that could help you. Yes, uh, in in July, what we expect as a company, hey, we 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 know that you're going to keep go, keep working with us. So it's worth it to us to to offer this. Plus, it gives you the ability to be able to uh, create revenue out of thin air. The financial discussion. I want to talk about this and you know what's happening in America? Fifty three thousand four eighty two is the average household income. Average bank account balance of forty four hundred. It's not going to be long before that average bank account balance is going to be zero. Uh, and so these are the things that you've got to be faced with when the flag goes down and we're racing towards December 31st. What are the patients going to be dealing with? What are they dealing with during that time? Americans didn't denied credit uh, dental care due to the credit scores. You know, uh, we talked about it. there'll be a, a definitely a reduction in their credit scores. So let's look at what's happening in dentistry. The trick is you need to understand the difference between cost and affordability. Learn how to make dentistry you're offering affordable. Uh, for every 10 crowns diagnosed, according to Gordon Christensen, and Howard Friend told me it's, it's not nine out of 10, it's probably 95 out of 100 are done one at a time. And what does that mean? Um, what it means is a dentist diagnosed five crowns, patient says, well, my insurance cover it. I know you guys have never heard this before. Uh, team member, well, they'll cover a portion of your treatment, your portion is 3,500. And then what does the patient say next? Yeah, can we just do one? Team member, oh, because they don't like conflict. Oh, sure, I'll, I'll get you set up. And most dentists have learned to just, gosh, that's what people say every time. Nine out of 10, 10 times, this is what they say. So pretty soon you become a dentist, you become a one tooth dentist. Well, that's not the way to do it. You know, do your diagnosis. And we, we deal with this at Productive Dentist Academy as far as how to do, um, you know, how to use verbal skills to be able to do this. But bottom line is, there's different ways of, of, of being affected by this. You know, why does it happen? Why does this happen? Because they don't have the, the money. They can't afford what you're offering. Decade after decade, we've been given the same payment options. I mean, it's an old way of thinking. And most of it is, um, you know, it's not really in the best interest of the doctor or the patient. 85% uh, of all the loans, we've been trained our teams have been trained by third-party financing to say 0% interest for 12 months. And uh, the people who take that, I would take it. Give me 12 months interest free. But the only problem is you're giving me a 10% discount on my fee. So it was going to be 10,000. Now it's nine. Well, that 10% discount is a 35% off of the average dental practice profit what we know is 61% of these people would have paid you cash. And so it's, it's really crazy. So we, we, instead we're going to take 10% off and let somebody else give me the money ahead of time. Okay. Now you may need that. So how do I help patients move forward with all the crowns they need? Here's how dentist diagnosis of five grand. And it doesn't matter if it's crowns. It doesn't matter if it's uh, quad scalings, fillings on these inlays, whatever it is. Well, my insurance cover it. They're going to say the same thing. They'll cover a portion of the treatment. Your portion will be 3,500. Can we just do one? Well, we say something different. Bob, you could, but why don't we just use your insurance as a down payment? We can work out convenient monthly payments as low as 85 bucks a month. Now, people say, well, I don't want to wait to get my money. Hey, guys, you weren't going to get this money. They were only going to do one freaking crown, okay? You weren't getting this money. This is this is why we have the commoditization of dentistry. They're going down to the cheapo depot. They're not going to have you do the work because they can't afford it because you have no financial options for them. Oh yeah. And Dr. Bear can give you a couple pills. You can sleep and we can do the work all in one day. Great. I have never had one patient turn that down. Not one time because if you had five crowns, you need to get done. You don't want to do it over five years. And, oh, no, we think we're going to help them by telling them, let's, let's do what insurance covers this year and insurance covers next year. And let's do it. Let's utilize your insurance to the maximum benefit. That's BS. In three years, that tooth fractures. And now you're doing a root canal or you're doing a, a extraction, ridge preservation, and implant. You haven't helped that patient. What you've done is you've just pushed it down the road because you, you know you don't like conflict. And if that's what the patient wants, give them some other options. Which would you rather have? And, and this, is, this is just right there. 
patient has 1500 insurance. This is the office on the left. This is the office on the right. Different ways of thinking. They need $5,000 work, $5,000 worth of work. That's the way it is. And that doesn't take a lot of dentistry to get to 5,000 nowadays, not with crowns uh, priced at whatever they're priced at. You tell them their portion, this is the practice on the left. You tell them their portion after insurance is 3,500 bucks. They decide to only do what insurance will cover because they don't have the money. On the practice on the right, you tell them their portion after insurance is 3,500, but that you have convenient monthly payments to pay their balance as low as $85 a month. They can get all the work done. You do the work in a single visit. You can offer sedation, which they almost always accept. I know when I have work done, I have sedation, so I don't like going either. You tell them you can do, well, I don't have the money. So you say, well, we can just do $3,000 worth of work to maximize your insurance and their portion will be 1500 and insurance is 1500. But unfortunately, they don't have 1500. You know, this is a tough time. They don't, they're not gonna have that money. So what are you gonna do? Well, you're gonna say, okay, let's just do what insurance covers. I, you know, we'll do $1,500 worth of work and insurance is going to cover 750 and your portion 750. And let's make an assumption, practice on the left and practice on the right. You're going to see 50 of these patients in your first month back, and you'll probably see a lot more than that. You're going to produce $1,500 per patient on the practice on the left or $75,000. On the practice on the right, you're going to produce 5,000 per patient or $250,000. Now, in your mind, and you know, people are having crowns made. I mean, if you have a Cerec machine, it's costing you 30 bucks a block. If you're sending it to, you know, some of the, some of the labs now, they're all doing you know, 50, 60 bucks a unit, and you're charging 1,000 bucks. I mean, this is leveraged procedures. Um, this 1,500 or this 5,000, which one do you want? Patients had to pay 37.5 in very difficult financial times to get this work done. Over here, patients have to pay zero out of pocket in very difficult financial times. Insurance pays the 75,000, but you have 175,000 worth of short duration, high yield debt paper paying you over the next 12 to 60 months. It's not like a, 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 it's not like a third party financing where you're gonna get your money up front and take a 10% discount. Give me 175,000 bucks worth of paper paying me over the next 12 to 60 months. People say, I don't want to wait 12 to 60 months. I don't want to do that. It's $175,000 that's paying you on average around 15% interest that you would have never had. The patient's going to say no. Be careful when you follow the masses. Sometimes the M is silent. We're in it for good. I don't want to finance patients for more than 12 months. Well, let me show you how interest offsets risk. This is a one, one year loan for 2,400. And when I say loan, it's, this is a loan calculator, but look at this pie. That's what I want you to look at. In two years, goes to 115 a month payments, better for the patient and better for you. You make more interest. Now it gets to 81, you make more interest. 65, you make more interest. 55, you can make it to where almost anybody can afford what they're doing. And we know that if payments are less than like 120 bucks, the chances of them defaulting go way down, even if they're what we call an E patient, which is the worst of the worst of credit. Benefits of doing good, you can totally fund your retirement plan. What I recommend that you do is set up a separate account. Don't set this up in your dental practice and have the monthly payments come there. Let's just say you do $10,000 worth of work. Uh, they, they pay a down payment, whether it comes from insurance, you always want to get your hard costs covered. Always want to get, you know, usually that's around 20%. So the patient pays $2,000 that goes into your, uh, into your software. That is $2,000 down payment that goes into treatment. You then write off, make an adjustment, write off the other 8,000 to compassionate finance, the way you would write off a PPO discount. So now you know exactly what's in compassionate finance. Am I recommending you do this, you know, with every single patient? No, a lot of people are going to pay you cash. A lot of people have money. You can also fund your, uh, pay off your student loans without affecting your take-home pay at all. Because what you're doing is you're increasing your, your access to money. 
take my family on a two week vacation. I can't picture that right now, but uh, you could do that. So patients have 1500 insurance. They need five crowns buildups, total fee, except 1500 is their down payment. Finance the remaining 6,000 for 60 months with an average 15.9% interest payments of 145 a month. You can do, I mean, patients can do this. You know, what kind of car would you be driving if you had to pay cash for it? What kind of house would you be living in if you had to pay cash for it? What kind of TV would you have in your living room if you had to pay cash for it? Well, you can, I'm asking you that as a doc, but ask your patients that and see what they say. One appointment with sedation. So how do I do it? Let's assume a 20% default, which the average default across all A, B, C, D, and E, which A is a good, good credit, uh, excellent. B is good, and it goes down to where poor credit, you know, to the E's. People say, well, I'd never want to do the E's. Well, the E's we know have about a 17.5% default, but that means that 83, you know, 82.5 pay their bill the full term at 17.9% interest. Which would you rather have? I'll tell you, take, take that. It's good. And all the fees charged by compassionate finance. So assuming a 20% default, which truly is around 11 and a half, but it depends. If, if you're seeing all ease, then it may, it'll be a closer to 17 and a half, but I wanted to cover it. Help one patient per week. What I'd prefer to say is do 25,000 or do 20% of your, of your revenue that you do in your business. 20% of your revenue. If you're doing, if, uh, if, if you're a hundred thousand dollar a month practice, set a goal of twenty thousand dollars to do with compassionate finance. Because what you're doing is you're actually helping patients that need it. Now you might, and what you'll find is you're going to like it so much that it's going to you're going to start increasing the amount that you're doing. But this is assuming about twenty four thousand or one patient a week. But I want you to look at it. at the end of twelve months. You've got monthly payments after default and after compassion of around $5,500 a month, but you also have a portfolio of paper, $230,000 portfolio. At the end of 60 months, you've got monthly payments of almost $28,000 a month coming in. Now, what would that, have? we've got docs right now, they're bringing in 40,000 a month that they're not so worried. I mean, it, it, takes away, it gives you a bridge to difficult times in your business. Portfolio of 1.152 million. So, I mean, now you've got over a million in portfolio and that is a portfolio. It's not an account receivable. You could take that to a bank, just like Howard was talking about. This is like having it in a, you know, you could, even with a discount of paper at, and we're gonna call it a 65% discount. It's actually a 35% discount on the worst patients. You could sell that paper every five years for 750,000. Now it's not available to do that yet, but over the next two to three years, we have, we actually have a bank that said they will buy a hundred million dollars worth of debt paper, which is what you would have. Uh, we just have to have larger tranches. So you'll, you'll hear more about that in the future, but you could do it every five years and make three quarters of a million dollars of cash every five years. If you chose to, you also, could keep getting monthly payments for 28 grand and invest it at a 4% return. And at the end of 20 years, you're going to have almost $11 million. So take control of your financial situation by doing this. Number one, you're helping patients that weren't going to get the treatment done and you're doing it creatively and you're doing it from a business perspective. What's your risk? You're not putting up money. Banks put up money. They have to get paid back. You're putting up your time. And if your time value is worth $420 an hour, which is the average dentist in the country, uh, that's okay. But what if your value per hour was 1000 or 1500 because you were helping more people? Your hard costs are covered. Get a down payment to cover your hard costs. Yeah, Bruce, but I also have team and I have my building and I have electricity. You got that anyway, dude. It doesn't matter. You've still got those bills. But these people are going to the cheapo depot. They're not going to have you do the work. So, it's, you know, but instead, I, I just want to do one at a time because that's, you know, totally based on the value of your time. Let's look at the face of compassionate finance. I mean, this is helping people. I mean, being able to get people the smile that they want. And we've got docs now that are doing $40,000 notes. And what you have to understand is the interest from these notes offsets the risk. These are subprime notes mostly, 
And what I can tell you is subprime people, sometimes they don't pay. Uh, but we know the percentages now. Back 10 years ago, we didn't. But now we've done several hundred million dollars in notes. And, uh, you know, we know the statistics. We know the, 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 uh, the metrics. Uh, help more patients by making care budget friendly. Perform more comprehensive dentistry and single appointments. Generate more revenue. Industry-leading cloud technology. We wrote our own software. We also wrote software for one of the top 50 banks in the U.S., um, and we're going to continue to come out with new software that helps dentistry and helps medicine. That's why we're, we're considered a, a fintech company. Best in-class training and customer support. Our experts manage every aspect of your loan contracts. Um, there's a simple application. It's done on an on a iPad. If you see credit rating bad, bank rating verified, good standing, they're approved. You can approve about 93%, 95% of the patients get approved because they actually pay their bills on time. We look at their checking history here. We look at it. Now you see 17.9% interest. People say, well, I don't want to, my patients to pay 17.9. Well, just let them be late with uh, one of the third party financing by one day. And now they're paying 27%. And these people are ease. They're the worst credit. They, they have bad credit for a reason. Okay, so some of them are going to default, but I don't care because I know the percentages are in my favor. So what what we look at though, oh, they, they didn't pay. Compassionate finance must not work. No, use your head. You know, this is, this is, these are subprime notes that you're doing for patients, but you're not putting up money. You're just putting up your time. Hopefully this makes sense. I know we have a lot of questions. This is my favorite. They, they get to pick their monthly payment. They select it. Let's just say that, well, I think I can do 336.70. That's 15 months. And I said, well, why don't you just do it 187 or 162? Let's make it easy for you. What does that do? Well, it extends it from 15 months to 36. It makes it easier for the patient to pay. And my, my ability to be able to offer them longer term is rewarded to me because I get more interest over that period of time. So if they need it, great. I want this to be a no-brainer for them to make those payments on a monthly basis. They have a retail installment agreement. That's very different than you saying, okay, pay me out over five months. Because after two months, when they quit paying you, you got your team working on this. They're calling and patients don't answer. And this is a whole, I mean, this is the problem. You get uh, all the money that's collected every Friday. You're going to get a check in, the, in, uh, in your bank account. Uh, we have dashboards for you. We provide the treatment, initiate collections, bill and collect it, and direct deposit. Goes right into your account. This is our office. Uh, over nine years, 1.2 million in treatment. Uh, this, this is the important thing to look at. 103% collection rate, meaning of our usual and customary fee of 100 bucks, we collect 103. The average dental office in the country collects 93.5% of what they do. That was in dental economics. Uh, that's not seeing a million patients, that's just one a month. But again, I would set 20% as your goal. If you're doing 100 grand, do 20 grand a month. If you're doing 200, do 40 grand a month. It's going to be your own side business. It's going to be an evergreen revenue business because it's going into this separate account. Uh, the average credit score here, 586. None of these people would be uh, approved. Uh, got monthly cash flow coming in. Uh, anyway, that's it. 170 million plans managed, uh, 100 million in principal paid out, 20 million in interest, 84% of the patients are subprime, 87% of the patients paid off their plan, meaning 13% didn't, okay, but they paid some payments, you know. Uh, and let's look here, account setup fees, this is the pricing for uh, compassionate finance, account setup fee of 1500, that's up front. That's for us to do the training, software configuration, state interest rate configurations, user guides, because states, you, you can offer different interest rates in different states. Software license agreement, that's so that you can use the software, 199 a month per location. Uh, software user agreement, unlimited application. What happens is the reason we have a fee is some people would just run the application, see if they were approved, and then go do third party financing. Well, you know, we, we get charged for that. So we decided that we would have a software licensing fee and we have a portfolio management fee of $4 plus one half of 1% uh, of the remaining principal. Meaning if you had a hundred grand in paper 
in debt paper or that's owed to you, you're going to be getting paying us about 500 bucks. That's where we make our money, but it's based on large numbers. I mean, it's based on an, an enormous amount of, uh, of revenue. Also, we're waiving the 1500 right now, and we're not even going to charge the software licensing fee until you got trained. And so what we would do is if you wanted to sign up for compassionate finance, you could sign up, start going through the process of getting your, your team trained and get everybody done. Once the training's done, which the training could be done the week before you're planning on opening so that when you get there on day one, you're going to be able to offer this to patients because remember the down payments from the insurance companies are going to be just as important. Money is going to be important for you at that point in time. All right. I had to rush through a little bit because we had a little extra, extra help today from Howard, but uh, where is Stevens? Uh, I'm right here. Hey, nope. Fa fantastic stuff. And you know, with, 3.3 million job claims out, jobless claims out there, the affordability is going to be a key when we all kind of get back to the marketplace here. All right. So my first question from David Edland, it is going to be for Howard. What are your thoughts on a reverse mortgage if my home is paid off with the value of $1 million? A reverse mortgage, can he, he must be older than 62. You can't do a reverse mortgage unless you are a senior, basically a senior citizen. I personally don't like reverse mortgages, but you can think of them like HELOCs, except with a HELOC, you have the flexibility in terms of when you need to take money out. So if you had a million dollar paid off house, I would absolutely go for a HELOC. No brainer, absolutely. All right, perfect. Uh, we, we have a few technical Abella questions I might be able to answer. So uh, can you use Abella to collect to somebody who has been turned over to collections? And the answer to that is yes. So we do it by billing type so we can go in and select whatever status they're in. And if you choose to do that, that is a, a capability of the product. Um, do you have to have patient permission to correspond with patients via text about uh, financial information? The answer to that is there has to be an opt out so they can opt out of the text communication if they want. But what you really want to do is to get your office manager to be able to start having those conversations of this is how we're going to communicate with the patients via text, via email. It's the same thing as send them an envelope in the mail. It's just far more um, uh, kind of kind of fluid. Will a bell work if it, it cannot link with your software? Hmm. Yes, it will. Um, you know, I'll answer that one. Yes, it can. If you're not integrated, what you'll will do is teach you how to download the data um, and you'll download it from the software and then a Bella can take over. You can load it into Bella yourself. It's a little harder, but uh, that's the way we did it when we initially started before we had integration into software. So, all right, perfect. Do we have anybody else with any questions? You can put them in the chat or you can put them into the, the, the little Q&A tab there and we'll get those answered for you. We must be doing a good job. <laughs> Absolutely. The questions, the questions that we had, like we, we'll have 20 minutes of questions or 30 minutes of questions, but I'm trying to handle those uh, questions in the presentation. So maybe that's helping a little bit. So uh, we're, we're fine tuning. Uh, on Monday, when we uh, have our uh, webinar on Monday, at same time, uh, hopefully we're going to have some uh, absolute steps to take uh, to, to understand this new bill that hopefully will pass tomorrow. Howard, I want to thank you for being on with us. Uh, great info. Uh, and for everybody listening, you will have, uh, you're going to get this recording. So you're going to get all of that uh, there. Uh, so good, good for you guys. Okay. And uh, I tell you what, I look forward to the next, I look forward to six weeks from now so that we, we're hopefully up and running and, and doing things, but take advantage of this with a Bella and take advantage of getting trained for compassionate finance. Because when you hit the ground, first of all, you're going to be able to start collecting money 
in April and May and June, uh, and it's not, not really going to cost you anything. It's just going to take a little bit of time. So um, we'll we'll uh, we'll do it. So uh, how do we get back up? How do you recommend fairly implementing hygiene again? fairly implementing hygiene again when we open back up. Yeah, it's going to be very tough because you already, if you've been booking and if you've got 10 hygienists, I mean, you've been booking out uh, for six months and that's how you've built that. It's going to be, it's going to be difficult. And I don't have an answer for you. I wish I did. Um, it, it, I would try to, uh, it's going to be tough. You may, there, there may be a lot of hygienists out there available <laughs> because they've been fired from their previous job. So ramp it up, but I, I don't have a good answer. It is going to be a struggle and that struggle is going to be a, probably a three to six month struggle. So, all right. Thank you guys for being on and I'll talk to you guys on Monday. Thank you. All right. Thanks Howard. Absolutely. My pleasure. Bruce. All right, buddy. <laughs> Let me see how to turn this off.